According to Albert Einstein's well-accepted special relativity theory, time travel would be possible by flying in a spacecraft at about 99.5% of the speed of light. Time travel has long been a staple of science fiction books and movies. But will we ever be able to build a time machine and beam ourselves backward and forward in time in real life? There are hundreds of hypotheses and conjectures, so until the day we can finally figure it all out, let's amuse ourselves with wonderful anecdotes such as these. On April 23rd of the year 2006, an Ukrainian policeman, Sergei Anapenko, approached to help a man who seemed to be heavily disoriented. When the officer asked him if he was all right, Sergei, who looked quite well-dressed yet wearing outdated attire, asked for a street which no longer exists. The cop found him suspicious and asked him for an ID. When the police saw his ID, they were shocked by what they seen. Sergei's ID was from the 1950s, and it was issued by the USSR, under his name Sergei Ponomarenko. His place of birth was Kiev, and the year of his birth was 1932. But Sergei looked only in his 20s. Police believed Sergei had a mental problem, so they took him to a psychiatric hospital in Kiev. The police asked a psychiatrist Dr. Pablo Kutrikov to help figure out this strange case. Sergei walked into Dr. Kutrikov's office. He observed his surroundings carefully. During interview, Sergei noticed the clock on the wall had stopped, so he asked Dr. Kutrikov the time. Dr. Kutrikov checked his Swiss watch but realized that the watch too had stopped. If we roll back and take a look when Sergei just enters the room, we will notice the clock and the time on the bottom right of the camera, indicated 12.31 p.m. What are the odds of clock and watch stopped at same time? Dr. Kutrikov asked Sergei to recall how did he came to 2006, Sergei said that he took a walk and wanted to take some pictures since it was his day off. Sergei took his camera with him. Shortly after he left home, he saw a strange flying object in the sky, and it looked like a giant bell. Sergei had never seen anything like it before, so he took a photo of the object. Sergei asked Dr. Kutrikov to inspect the film in his camera to prove that he was telling the truth. Dr. Kutrikov asked a professional photographer, Vadim Posner, to check the film. Vadim said the type of film in Sergei's camera stopped production in the 1970s. Camera had become collector's item by 2006, but none could compare to the condition of Sergei's camera. His camera was practically in a brand new condition. Just like what Sergei had said, one of the photos showed, there really was a huge flying bell object or UFO. Dr. Kutrikov showed the photo to Sergei. It proved that Sergei had been telling the truth. Sergei said he was shocked to see the strange object, so he snapped a photo of it. After it, when he turned around, he noticed that his surroundings had completely changed. He didn't recognize anything around him, and he couldn't find his way back home. Dr. Kutrikov and other experts checked the other photos developed from Sergei's film. The streets in the photos looked quite different from those in 2006. Films usually can preserve well for two to three years. If films are frozen, they can be preserved for 20 years. In order to extend the life of film, it has to be placed in an airtight container and stored in a dry and cool place. But the photos from Sergei's 1958 film were perfectly new and undamaged at all. 
If Sergei were not a time traveler from the past, then it was just incredible that his film could be so well preserved. Upon inspecting the pictures further, Dr. Kutrikov and others spotted a young couple. The man was Sergei himself, and the woman was his girlfriend, Valentina Kulik. In the picture, Sergei wore exactly the same clothes as he was wearing in 2006. Dr. Kutrikov believed the pictures were authentic, and the flying object was a UFO. On April 25, 2006, Sergei returned to his room after finishing a conversation with Dr. Kutrikov. That was their last conversation. Очень непростая. У меня пациент, который утверждает, что прибыл из прошлого. А я, как доктор-психиатр, должен определить диагноз и прописать ему лечение. И вдруг я нахожу доказательства его рассказу. На фотографии изображено действительно нечто похожее на НЛ. Shortly after Sergey went back to his room, hospital staff noticed that he disappeared. When the police checked the surveillance video, they only saw footage of Sergey entering the room. There was no footage of him leaving the room. The windows in his room were barred by iron railings on the outside, so it was impossible that Sergey escaped through the windows. People believed there was only one possible explanation, Sergey had returned to the year he had come from. The woman in one of the pictures was Sergey's girlfriend. If she was still alive, she would be the only clue and witness to this strange episode in history. Fortunately, the police were able to find Valentina Kulik. She was 74 years old in 2006. Valentina flipped through her photo album and found a photo she took with Sergey in 1958, it was exactly the same photo that was found in Sergey's camera in 2006. When Dr. Kutrikov showed her the same photo, Valentina was very surprised and asked where he had gotten it. Valentina confirmed that the photo was authentic. Сережа был странным человеком. Он говорил такие вещи, которые в то время невозможно было подумать. Он думал, что видит будущее. С ним что-то вдруг изменилось. He told her about the microwave and how easily it could cook a meal in a few minutes using electricity. A Ukrainian television program, One Plus One Discovery, looked into the matter. A team of experts from the TV program located an old audio recording from 1960 in the TV station's archive. The recording was an interview the TV station conducted on Sergei. Поверьте, приготовление еды станет удобным и быстрым занятием. К примеру, печь картошку мы сможем с помощью духа. In the interview, Sergei talked about what technology would be like in 40 years. He mentioned the microwave, the wireless telephone, and the artificial heart. Sergei described that man would be able to make an artificial heart that runs on batteries and pumps blood to the rest of the body. The interviewer was shocked and said to Sergei, if you did not provide so much detail, I'd surely think you lost your mind. Sergei's description of the artificial heart amazed experts too, because he used modern medical terminologies, which were unheard of in the 1960s, in the USSR. Back in 2006, the surveillance video showed that before Sergei entered Dr. Kutrikov's office, he was observing hospital staff using a microwave. A staff member also states she was reading a magazine which talked about an artificial heart. The surveillance video also showed Sergei asking the staff many questions about their mobile phones. Thus, investigators believed that Sergei shared what he saw in 2006 with the USSR in the 1960s. Today, scientists are still looking for answers. Will science fiction become reality? Perhaps one day, the mystery of time will be unveiled. And that's it for today's video. If you have any thoughts, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please support us by doing so. See you in the next video, till then, take care. Thanks for watching.